A few years ago, I took a trip to paradise, an idyllic little place called the Maldives. Just step outside your room and there was a fabulous beach, a long stretch of pure white sand. Try that today, you end up in the ocean. If ever you needed proof that global warming exists, it's right there. The Maldives is drowning. On the latest estimates, they'll be almost entirely underwater by the end of the century. But the Maldivians won't go down without a fight. They're taking drastic action to save their island nation. And if all else fails, there's a fallback plan. Pack up and resettle here in Australia. <laughs> The Maldives is the Indian Ocean's jewel in the crown. Playground to the rich and very rich. Sun-drenched beaches and white sand. For years, the locals have had it all. Fresh fish you could literally drag home, fruit and vegetables in abundance, and plenty of tourist dollars. So what could possibly go wrong? Well, this. The science is fairly certain. The sea is rising and, and the Maldives will probably sink in some time to come. Global warming, climate change, call it what you will, according to the experts, will cause the sea levels to rise and rise by about a metre come the end of the century. Now that may not seem like much, but that's about as high above sea level as the Maldives are today. And that's about the height that I'm standing at now. A rise of one metre would see the Maldives literally go under. The first country to be drowned because of global warming. It is unthinkable. Here they are, 1,192 islands scattered like pearls across the sea. Breathtakingly beautiful, but like so many other low-lying countries around the world, dangerously vulnerable. The Maldives has already had a taste of nature at its worst, when hit by the Boxing Day tsunami. It swallowed up whole islands and killed more than 80 people. A disaster made worse because the Maldives' natural defences are already down. It's coral reefs, an early victim of global warming. These islands exist because of the coral reefs. Without the coral reefs, they wouldn't exist at all. They'd just erode away very quickly. Charlie Verran is an Australian scientist on a mission. He's the world authority on coral reefs, and he's come to the Maldives to find out whether these tiny, fragile islands can be saved. For literally millions of years, the corals have never been exposed to the temperatures they're, they're being exposed to now, and they're simply not designed to take it. These islands rely on their coral reefs for protection, a kind of frontline defence against erosion. But now they're being broken down, literally bleached to death in hot seawater. We're in for a changing climate like we've never imagined before. We're going to be witnessing whole cities being destroyed uh, through the sea level rise. And in Australia, what can we expect? Uh, we can expect the destruction of the Great Barrier Reef, for sure. For the people of the Maldives, though, this nightmare is already upon them. As is, this was originally the island, huh? That's right, yes. This, this was the, the beach earlier. Uh, all this area that you see here, this was the beach. And all this area has now been eroded over the last uh, six, seven years. Aziz and, uh, is a marine see, uh, biologist who works at the Banyan Tree Resort, an island that's literally being washed away. I think we have lost about uh, 10, 12 metres of uh, beach here from this side. So it's a constant fight against nature for us now. For me, this is quite a sight. 
I visited eight years ago and I walked right here on what was then dry, hot sand. This, I would normally be standing dry. That's right, <laughs> yes. Sand is being pumped back onto the island to stop it whittling away. It's a daily battle. And how old are these guys? This is... Uh, two weeks? About two weeks old, yes. Ah, yes. yes. But it's not only about saving beaches. Banyan tree breeds turtles, and the loss of the island would also see them homeless. This little one was born here, and it will come back to this island after 20 to 30 years to lay the eggs. So within this 20 or 30 years, this, this island disappears or eroded. This little animal cannot find the place to lay egg. It's an ecological balancing act. Aziz and his colleagues are even trying to create artificial reefs, growing coral on steel rods by zapping them with a very low dose of electricity. So this is, this is what it looks like? Yes, this is a five-year-old piece from our experiment. What you see in the centre is the steel rod and uh, surrounding it is the calcium carbonate. It is a small micro-ecosystem. There's plenty of fish living in between and then new corals have come and settled. That won't make any difference. I'm afraid, it's a shame. It's a very worthwhile, good, but scientific experiment going on. But um, in terms of reality, these corals are, well, they are doomed and there's no other way of looking at it. It doesn't give Charlie Verin any pleasure to deliver the bad news. It's very sad. Uh, they've done nothing to bring this on themselves. We Australians have more than any other uh, country per capita. And we're seeing now what the Western world has imposed on these people. And it is sad and it's so unjust. And wrong. And it's very wrong. You've become a victim, have you not, of what the rest of the world is doing? I've never blamed others for my own situation. Are you just being nice? Uh, uh, no, I'm being realistic. For the new president of the Maldives, 36-year-old yeah, Mohammed Nasheed, it's a seemingly impossible task. Uh, we are the um, infantry, uh, um, and we are the frontline state of this. And therefore, we have a moral responsibility and obligation on ourselves to let others know what is happening. If ever there was a role model for survival, it's President Nasheed. He's the Maldives' Nelson Mandela, elected only six months ago after years of jail and torture at the hands of the dictator who ruled this island paradise over the past 30 years. When you were in prison fighting for your own survival, did you ever think that you would be president of a country fighting for its survival? No, I, I, I didn't. We don't have much time to waste. Um, if, if we really have to sort ourselves out in the next 10 years. And if we don't? Well, we all perish, we all die. It says, I, mean, I, I, I think it's um, fairly obvious. This is certainly the only country I've been to where every hotel provides life jackets alongside the bathrobes. But in the Maldives, it's no joke. The government has been forced to build a massive seawall around the capital, Mali, to literally hold back the tide. And on a nearby island, a new city is being created. And to fortify it against the effects of global warming, the island level has been raised an extra metre. Mali is just about one metre, and this island is about two metres above sea level. So it's believed that after even Mali goes off, it will be there for at least for a few years after that. Very nice. This is the garden. Yeah, the idea is to grow as much produce as possible ourselves. So even though the Maldives makes a minuscule contribution to carbon emissions, it's punching above its weight in the fight against global warming. It's a little bit like a supermarket in a garden. Australian environmentalist Wayne Wadsworth has spent the last 18 months helping the Son of a Fushi resort become carbon neutral. So you can come and you know you can pick different things from the garden and 
the kitchen staff coming in often, they pick things freshly. You can actually hear them chopping up probably your dinner tonight. Oh, I hope so. The resort grows its own food, bottles its own water, recycles just about everything, and has even developed an air conditioning system utilising deep sea water. But will any of this count? Or is it that in this newly wed paradise, the honeymoon is well and truly over? If the scientists are right, it may already be too late to save the Maldives. And if that's the case, its brash new president has a backup plan, an extraordinary scheme to relocate his entire nation. He's already been stashing money away to buy land in a foreign country. And the place that he's been eyeing off? Well, it's 6,000 kilometres that way, Australia. If all else fails, is there a particular part of Australia you'd like to put a <laughs> put down roots? Um, well, you would want me to say this, wouldn't you? I would. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I mean, I mean, we should go up north, uh, where the beaches are there. Um, we are sea creatures almost. Uh, and, and so the top end of Australia would suit you fine. Would suit us fine. Uh, we are already sea creatures, and and we can't just suddenly become land creatures anymore. But for the Maldivians, their lives so intimately bound with the sea, the idea of pulling up stumps is impossible to imagine. For me personally, I will not leave this country. I will not leave this country. I will be the last man standing. The president would much prefer to stay put too. He's even ready to think about a future nation built entirely over the water, as some of the resorts are now. The resorts have overwater uh, rooms, and we can have overwater blocks of flats. Uh, and you've you've seen Waterworld. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're seeing? <laughs> no, but look, a lot of marginal, let's say, fringe thinking is no longer fringe. Waterworld is, of course, a science fiction scenario, Hollywood's vision of a world drowned by global warming. But if you believe Charlie Verin, the future of the planet could be just as bleak. I think the big unknown to most people is the extent of the catastrophe. It is going to be severe beyond imagination. And I've got two young children, and for me, this thought is just horrible, because this is the world they're going to live in. We have just 10 years to cut our carbon emissions enough to avoid this disaster, says Charlie Verin. 10 years to save the Maldives and ultimately ourselves. The future does look bleak, but I have to say that um, if humans, if we get our act together, it doesn't have to go down this doomsday path. Mm. We can turn it around. That's, that, I think, is, is a heartening thought. And for this tiny nation's prisoner turned president, this is just one more battle that has to be won. I believe that there will come a tipping point in people's minds. Uh, humanity will not just ex extinct itself. You're the ultimate optimist, aren't you? I don't want to give up this fight. We'll fight it and, and we will change the world. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thank you for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes, which are on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.